Okay, mics are on. Makes you think, and I got a cold. As soon as I got off the plane. No. Like that, I just... You're on for tomorrow at 2.30. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, staff, members of council. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting for the Town of Pelham Council for Monday, March 4th, to order. We will begin with an invocation led by Councillor King, followed by the singing of the National Anthem led by mm -hmm. Councillor Papp. All rise. Lord, to whom much is given, much is expected. Grant that as this council meets to take up the business of the people, they demonstrate wisdom in all their deliberations. May the decisions that are made in this place of government be guided by strength and courage. Be with each council member as they consider each policy, bylaw, and procedure placed before them. Amen. Amen. O Canada, our home and native land, true patriot of, in all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you all. We will begin with the Approval of the agenda. It's been moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor King, that the agenda for the March 4th, 2013 regular meeting of Council be adopted. And Council, um, I, I think I declared quorum. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Durley wondered if we have quorum. We do have quorum. Thank you. Um, I wonder if we might um, move the, since we have a couple of presentations this evening about the environmental protection bylaw, the proposed bylaw, wondered if we might also move up consideration of that bylaw to earlier in the agenda. So is there a, a councillor that would be uh, interested in moving that so that we might deal with it immediately following the presentations? Moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Durley. That and the environmental protection bylaw to be considered after item 7.2.3 of the agenda. Questions or comments? I'm going to call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Any opposed? None. Amendment carried. Any other additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, Councillor Kersey. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to add an item under 14.1 uh, Councillor's reports. I'd like to bring a brief report on the beautification committee. Okay. Is there a seconder for that, uh, Councillor King? <clears throat> Thank you. Going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That amendment is carried. Any other changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question on the amended agenda. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Mm -hmm. Do any members have any pecuniary interest that they need to disclose at this time? Can that be noted in the minutes, please? Thank you. And then to our next item, which is hearing of presentations, delegations, and our regional councillor's report. The first is delegations, and we have three. The first, and they're all dealing with the same matter. And the first is Duncan McFarland, QC, if you wouldn't mind uh, joining us here at the podium, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. Uh, I appear on behalf of... Uh, uh, Willowbrook Nurseries Inc. Willowbrook is, uh, as you know, a large operation uh, at uh, Canberra Road or 
near Camber Road, Foss Road, and uh, Regional 24. Uh, it employs a large number of people, both uh, locals and uh, also offshore people during the season, concerned with the production of uh, uh, horticultural uh, goods. And it's a farm. Uh, my client, uh, John Langendoon, is here. His son, Chris, who is involved in the business with him, is here. They're very concerned about this. In respect of this particular bylaw before Council now, you all know that this grows out of the, uh, the site alteration bylaw. The site alteration bylaw grew out of the fill disaster that occurred, I think, in North Pelham, almost in the well, southern part of Pelham. But the, the uh, legislation has now grown to have a very significant impact on farmers, and it ought not to be passed in this form insofar as it affects farmers. Uh, the present iteration of this bylaw has only been circulated for a couple of weeks. The uh, Policies and Priority Committee uh, uh, considered it and, uh, and put it on the agenda for tonight. Uh, there have even been alterations to the draft bylaw circulated to, I don't know who, but to me and to uh, my client and to, I'm sure, one or two other people who have expressed opposition to the bylaw, but I do not believe that alteration to the bylaw has been publicly circulated. I regard it, as I just said to the mayor before the meeting, as ad hocery. It's just an attempt to put a Band-Aid on a bad piece of legislation, at least insofar as farmers are concerned, uh, uh, at the very last minute. Specifically, and you've heard from John Langendoon in detail, and we have circulated his letter from last November so that you can be reminded of what John had to say. You've heard from me in detail, and we've circulated that letter from the same uh, point in time as to just <coughs> how much regulation a business like John and Chris's uh, is, is under uh, the... Uh, under the control of the government of, uh, of the province. Um, Environmental Protection Act, uh, Ministry of Natural Resources. Uh, this bylaw has nothing to do with uh, pits and quarries because, well, pits and quarries is under Ministry of Natural Resources. Well, if pits and quarries are, why isn't an operation like Willoughby? Why isn't it exempted like, uh, like uh, a quarry is? which uh, incidentally doesn't em em employ as many people as Willowbrook, I would uh, venture to say. There are some really bad pieces of drafting in this legislation. Pond is included in the definition of water course. Counselor and gentlemen, water course means water coursing, moving. A pond doesn't move. It does not contain a stream. Uh, the legislation as drafted, the bylaw as drafted, talks about coastal, coastal uh, uh, waters and, and uh, tide waters. It's, it, it borders on the laughable. If it weren't so serious for Willowbrook, it would be laughable. It's a badly drawn uh, uh, bylaw in... in uh, in many respects, it has unnecessary, at least to my clients, arcane language in it that is hard to decipher. Why not try to uh, circulate something publicly? Why isn't there a public meeting to consider this bylaw? There was a public meeting for the site alteration bylaw in any event. Uh, the conditions in paragraph or article 7 of the bylaw really does uh, contain some provisions that are quite alarming to, to uh, Willowbrook. The, uh, I think there's been an attempt to fix that, but again, it's, it's more or less a private attempt to fix that. That's not right. That's not the way 
legislation should be dealt with, even municipal legislation. Municipal legislation touches the, the, the residents of the municipality in a very direct way. And farmers in Pelham are an important part of the municipality and are particularly touched in a direct way by this uh, bylaw. Article 8 gives the director, who to my knowledge has nothing to do with farming, very sweeping powers, very sweeping powers. When the director deems it necessary to have fill or other material inspected or analyzed, how does the director come to that conclusion? Does he guess? Does she guess? Who's the director from time to time? Right now, I think the director is the fire chief. Well, the fire chief is not a farmer by trade, I would venture to suggest. And remember, this bylaw purports to pay, pay lip service to the provisions of the Farming and Food Production Protection Act. Now, the Farming and Food Production Protection Act is one of the most unusual statutes on the books for the province of Ontario. It, it has a preamble. It doesn't just say, uh, Her Majesty, by and with the consent of the legislature, will do such and so. It, it says, it is desirable to conserve, protect, and encourage the development and improvement of agricultural lands for the production of food, fiber, and other agricultural and horticultural products. They may include certain things. Because of the pressures educated on the, uh, imposed upon the uh, agricultural community, it is increasingly difficult for agricultural owners and operators to effectively produce food, fiber, and other agricultural or horticultural products. It recognizes all these pressures, and it attempts to address them, and it provides a mechanism to deal with them, and it ought not to be provided in this municipal bylaw with great respect. <coughs> and then, of course, I've already mentioned, and, and uh, John, I believe, also has already mentioned all of the other uh, statutes that bear upon uh, uh, the activities of Willowbrook in particular, but other, other uh, uh, agricultural uh, operations. to make a, a particular point that often when nursery and grape growers produce it or purchase a new piece of property, they have to peel off the topsoil, to level it, then replace the topsoil after the uh, tile drainage has been put in. A big investment. Uh, he asks rhetorically, is that a normal farm practice? I would say it is. But who else is to say? Is it the director who is to say? Uh, members of the council, I implore you on behalf of uh, Willowbrook, and I venture to say on behalf of other farmers, not to pass this bylaw in this form at this time, but permit further discussion and refinement of the bylaw in the way in which it was attempted in the past two weeks. Those are my submissions. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I wonder if members of council have any questions for our presenter at this time. McFarland, do, do members of council have any questions? I, I have a question. Um, the, uh, the, the bylaw that's before us does say that it exempts uh, activities or matters which are an incidental part of normal farm practice, including such removal as um, incidental part of sod farming, greenhouse operations, and nurseries for agricultural purposes. Is that not what your client does? Is that not what my client does? Is that does? what your client does, nurseries for agricultural purposes? Is that, why would that not be exempt? I don't understand. Mr. Mayor, uh, it, it gives in one with one hand and takes away with another. There is a lot in this bylaw that would impact or have the potential to impact the activities of Willowbrook. So while you uh, read... Uh, exclusive of everything else, that particular phrase, it sounds innocuous and it sounds supportive of farming. But I submit to you that it is, in its whole, a very uh, dangerous piece of legislation for the farmer. 
That's oh. the best answer I can give you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate your presentation. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. Gregory Souk. Is Mr. Souk here? Mr. Souk. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us this evening. So I'm uh, Gregory Souk. I work for uh, South Pelham Nursery, located on 810 Center Street. I also live in Pelham. I live on uh, Canberra Road. I'm the field production manager at South Pelham Nursery. Um, I'm a young farmer in the Pelham area who, along with my brother, is uh, beginning to purchase ownership of my parents' nursery. We are a tree-growing nursery, and over half of our production is native tree species of southern Ontario. We definitely understand the importance of taking care of the land we grow on, maintaining topsoil, proper drainage, tilling, etc. In fact, all of our trees are harvested, dug bare root, and shipped with no soil. Um, we are concerned that the potential environmental protection bylaw will not allow us to manage our land in a timely and cost-efficient manner. For example, should we need to clean out a silted-in pond or ditch and move the soil to a low spot in the field, enlarge an existing pond, uh, this bylaw would mean that we would have to have studies, permits, inspections, uh, which would potentially cost more than the project work and more than it's worth, uh, delay the day-to-day -day farm operations of growing. This proposed bylaw will potentially make it too expensive to recoup the extra costs and the price of our tree crops. Being farmers, we are extremely concerned that this proposed bylaw will cause regulatory and financial hardship for us to be able to grow nursery stock on our own land. Um, being, uh, being young as well, my brother and I, possibly even two brothers, uh, hope to take over the business. And uh, there's always the thought of uh, expansion as well, we hope, anyways. Um, and then that, that could mean purchasing more land and sometimes to set up for the type of growing that we do, um, moderate land leveling is needed, some hills are too steep for our equipment, ponds need to be dug, um, <laughs> things like that. And it's hard, I mean, looking at some of the things we deal with, expenses are huge and to, to be able to, to add extra expenses in that way, a lot of things are out of our control like fuel costs, uh, property costs in the area, all that stuff we can't really control. But this is just an added cost that we hope we can avoid. Um, we face enough obstacles trying to begin a career in horticulture. Land costs, equipment, fuel, market conditions, and of course the weather are all factors that can positively or negatively affect growing success. We beg the town of Pelham not to hinder the agricultural heritage and future farming success of the Pelham area. Again, we ask that you will exempt the few full-time farming and horticultural businesses in this area from the restrictions imposed by this bylaw. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I wonder if members of council have any questions for you. Councillor Pat. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Souk. For what do you consider to be the most dangerous or, let's say, the most uh, difficult challenge that you see in this bylaw, the way it stands right now, for you as a young farmer? Um, well, just, just an added cost and a time thing. I mean, there's, there's times of the year where, uh, let's say, we want to clean out a pond and we, we want to go ahead and do that for, for finance reasons or whatever. It's the end of the year. We want to get it done right. before year end, things like that, that it might not be timely enough and also the cost of doing it. Okay. And um, the cost, I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on what, what costs are you referring to itself? The, um, the it actual permit costs. Um, I don't know if we have to have uh, an inspector in. Like, I'm not really sure what is all going to have to happen in order to get the permit, to dig a pond, to move topsoil, that sort of thing. We definitely don't want to do anything <coughs> um, without a permit if we're supposed to get one. Right. So just the extra time as well. We, I mean, we're, we're pretty busy most of the time. So. Okay, thank you, Mr. Souk. I appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor. Other questions for Mr. Souk? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Now, I do have a, uh, a motion here. Thank you. I do have a motion moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor Clark. The information by, uh, submitted by Gregory Souk regarding the proposed environmental protection by law be received. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. And that means that I neglected to do the same for Mr. McFarland. So may we do that now, Council? It has been moved by Councillor Clark, seconded by Councillor Durley, that information submitted by the delegation Duncan M. McFarland on behalf of Willowbrook Nurseries regarding the Environmental Protection Bylaw be received. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Apologies uh, for not doing that earlier. Thank you. And next on the agenda is uh, Mr. Lewis Dam. Mr. Dam? 
Thank you. Um, my name's Louis Dam. I'm a co-owner of Floral Dimensions Flower Farm on uh, Highway 20. Um, my family's in the same situation where, as, uh, as Greg, where, where we have uh, two sons getting involved in the business. And uh, uh, farming's a tough business. Um, it, is a, it is a light, it's a, it's a lifestyle. Um, it's not what it used to be in the old days. We, we used to be, you know, I was talking to somebody today that's only 60 years ago um, that the onset of horse and plow was being moved to tractors. Um, technology has moved along much quicker as long as restrictions with regards to uh, disease control, disease awareness, pest control, pest awareness, etc. And uh, I'm going to read the letter. Uh, that I submitted to council, and I have I have strong concerns on this uh, proposed bylaw. But uh, as I as I put in the letter, I have serious concerns with the most recent draft of the site alteration bylaw, or it is as it is now called the environmental protection bylaw. Clever new title, but it is the same old problem. This is just a switch. My concern with this bylaw is the town of Pelham's lack of understanding and knowledge of farm practices. I think this has been demonstrated with what's been going on in the past. Um, I have in the past had to change the grade of my land so to protect my farm from and water supply from pollution caused by road salt. I think I brought this up in a past uh, meeting and I'm going to emphasize this again. This is, this is a serious matter and, and, and my water supply is the lifeblood of my business. It's the lifeblood of all farm businesses. Um, I will protect it and, and my question is too is this considered a normal farm practice that I changed my land to restrict pollution into my water supply um, do I need permission to do this seasonal crops are what we're in seasonal crops uh, are non forgiving to bureaucracy um, we are a just on time industry. So if we are required by another government agency, whether that be the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture and Food, but more important, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, we are re required to act immediately. Just in the last couple of weeks, we, get a, we got requests from the USDA and the CFIA that we have to have a phytosanitary certificate for, uh, for Ipomia or potato vine. Now, I don't know if any of you know what that is, but for us, it's a hurdle now that we have to go over. Um, and it's a Canadian Food Inspection Agency's regulated phytosanitary certificate. If I have to do something on my land and I have $100,000 worth of inventory, I'm going to do it because I need to ship it. And we don't get warnings on these, on these requirements. I have the same issues as with Mr. Souk said. Um, my pond requires periodic maintenance and clean up. We had a really dry year last year. That causes serious problems in our water. Any of you know what liverwort is? That's an issue. Do I need a permit to clean out my pond because I got a liverwort problem, which is a biosecurity issue that farmers have to deal with? Um, the way that the bylaw is written, we don't understand it. But who's going to say what is right? Is an inspector going to come in the farm and tell me what to do and how to deal with liverwort when they don't even know what it is? That's a question. Is the retiri removed from my pond considered under normal farm practices? Mr. Soup called it uh, sediment. Some people will call it sludge. It's got a number of different names. It is considered to me a normal farm practice. It's part of the biosecurity and protecting our waterways and our water supply on the, pond, on the farm. Many farms have restricted entry to certain areas of their farm as a step to the biosecurity <clears throat> program. Some of these programs are regulated and enforced by various government agencies. Where is the town of Pelham's authority on these farm entry regulations? We have to deal with diseases, chrysanthemum rust. I grow a lot of chrysanthemums. Nobody enters my field without 
notification that they're entering. Our number one challenge and the number one danger to our crop is the general public. Inspectors travel all over the place. Are they going to have clean boots? Are they going to have clean shoes? Are they going to have stuff on their clothes? Are they going to have, have molds and, and uh, bacteria that they're going to transmit from one crop to the other? Plum pox. We've all heard of plum pox. Uh, poultry farms have issues with avian influenza. Um, try entering onto a poultry premises. Uh, you'll be met with some dogs. It is, it is highly disrespectful to enter a farm without any notification. And it is, it, is, it is written under the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and the Ministry of Agriculture Food. It is regulated. And it states that inspectors and municipal people have to notify prior to entry. And under the in inspection procedures, it specifically says alone or with an expert. Not on my farm, you're not. And who is the expert? Who determines who the expert is? That's not written. That's pretty loosely said. Farmers need to be completely exempt from this proposed bylaw. Farmers follow many regulations. Farmers are keepers of the land. It is good farm business a good farm business strategy to take care of the environment. We're not messing things up. You had a few goofballs out there that tried to do some stupid things. Come on. You know, it's not good for me to mess up my land. I don't need a berm. I don't need any of that stuff. Please do not duplicate existing regulations or contradict existing regulations farmers already follow. Any attempt by the town of Pelham to do so could be cause for challenge. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Dam. Do members of Mr. Dam, members of council may have uh, questions for you. Do members of council have any questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Dam. Appreciate your presentation. It's been moved by Councillor Papp, seconded by Councillor uh, Clark, that the information submitted by Lewis Dam regarding the proposed environmental protection bylaw be received. All those in favor? <coughs> the opposed? Motion carried. The next item is the uh, environmental protection uh, bylaw. Under Section uh, 17.8, as we moved at the beginning of the, uh, the council meeting, and it has been uh, moved by Councilor Ribiak, seconded by Councilor Clark, that leave now be given to introduce the following bylaw and dispense with the reading of the bylaw, being a bylaw, being an environmental protection bylaw. Discussion regarding the matter, Councilor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I've heard with, with a lot of interest, I'm sure we all have, uh, the submissions made today, and I think we've read uh, a number of uh, submissions made, representations made uh, via email and, and others earlier. And I think that, that uh, I, I was uh, impressed by, and I'm sure we were all <laughs> impressed by, the tremendous concern that farmers in our community have that this bylaw is somehow going to impact negatively on farming operations. I think that, that this draft of the bylaw has gone pretty far in its attempt to ensure that normal farm practices are, in fact, not affected. That the draft uh, has, has done its, its very best to, to deal with, with the primary issue that affects this community, which is the importation of, of great quantities of construction and other waste and the depositing of that onto agricultural land, not only to the detriment of the land but to the, the risk of properties around it, uh, to water supply, to uh, peace and quiet enjoyment of, of property of, of neighbors of those. And I think that the, the central, the central 
target of, of this bylaw is the prohibition on, on dumping. The people who've uh, made representation this evening and those who've done in writing are really concerned as to whether the intent of this is to, to impact on normal farming practices. I think the, uh, this draft, as, as I read it, goes as far as I think it, it can to ensuring that normal farm practices are not going to be affected and that the, the target of the, the, the bylaw is, is all that will be, um, will be controlled by the bylaw. I, I also note that in terms of the administration of, of the bylaw, there is no mention made of permits or fees, that if anyone is, uh, in, in, in the course of their, their farming, going to be doing something which they are concerned might be the target of uh, some attention as a result of this bylaw, they need to do no more than inform the town of what it is that they intend to do, and they will receive a letter, and I don't see any, any application with regard to that. I don't see any, any fee with, with regard to that. I don't see any, any particular onerous process that anyone needs to go through to, to allow them to farm. And if they've uh, proceeded to do something that, that anyone else may have a com comment about, I think it's going to be fairly easy for people who are, are farming, who are in the nursery business, or thought business to be able to point out that what they're doing is of normal farm practice, and I think that we would, both town staff and, and, and council would, would understand that that's fairly normal. But it's pretty easy to identify uh, an abnormal practice like big, big dump trucks moving in with loads of concrete and asphalt and God knows what all, and, and depositing it in places. I think it would be pretty easy to identify uh, those as not farming practices, not normal farming practices, and I think that that a fair uh, application of common sense would uh, would uh, indicate to what needs to be stopped and what doesn't need to be stopped. However, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I certainly understand uh, the concern of people, and I would um, I would suggest that we could do a couple of things. And I'm not sure that, uh, that, that what I, I'm going to suggest is, is required by way of a motion because it doesn't affect the, the, the content of the bylaw at all, but rather uh, suggestions as to how we might proceed in terms of doing our business around this bylaw. And there are two things that I would like to, to refer to. The first is to make sure that people in the town do understand that the administration of this bylaw does not have within it anything stringent or difficult and that if anyone has any concerns or questions that those questions can be put forward in advance. Uh, if, if someone wants a letter, for example, that says it's normal farm practice for me to move topsoil around because that's the nature of my business, that a letter like that can be filed and kept on record and shown to whomever uh, may have an interest in it. So that's one way that, that people can inure themselves uh, against any, any action that they, in fact, might, might feel is forthcoming for, from this in a, an unjustified way. So that's one thing that can be done. And the other thing that can be done, and I would strongly suggest that we, we consider it, is that given that this is a new bylaw and a new experience for, uh, for the town, that if we pass this, then maybe we can ask a year from now for representation, from input, maybe a public meeting, from those who believe that they have been affected or those who have comment to make about the application of this bylaw in terms of their experience after a year. And we can identify from that, I think, what impact, what, what harmful impact on farming operations or anything else that this bylaw might have had. I don't suggest that we make it part of the bylaw. I don't know how we could resolve to, to do that sort of thing. Um, I don't know whether that requires a, a, a motion uh, not to change the, the, the bylaw, but in order for us to proceed with that in mind. But I think that those two actions might go a long way to allaying fears and, uh, and minimizing the concerns that people have about how this is going to be administered and what impact this is, uh, this is going to have. I think that the concerns that we've heard this evening are, are sincere. I know that I've had conversation with um, 
a number of people in this town, and they have all said the same thing. What they've said is there's a real obligation for the appropriate stewardship of farmland. Um, I think uh, and Mr. Dan may have, may have placed it in much more colorful language than, than I could use, but I think he's indicated that there's a tiny minority of people who treat their, their property inappropriately, mm -hmm. and they are the cause of this bylaw, that normal farm practice is not the reason why uh, this bylaw is being passed. There's no desire to control it. I know that the people in this community who carry on normal farming operations do it within absolutely normal and acceptable parameters, and it is not our intention in all of our discussions. We've never attempted to control that. In fact, this bylaw has been reduced from its original form to what it is now out of appreciation for all of that, that, that motion. So um, I think we should pass this. I think we should make some resolution to how we are going to administer it openly and publicly and how we are going to review this sometime down the road to make sure that what's happening as a result of this bylaw is exactly what was intended to happen. Those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor. Appreciate your, your comments. Uh, others want to comment? I do want to clear up one item uh, that was raised by one of the presenters, and I'm going to ask the clerk to, uh, to comment on this. Um, one of the presenters wondered about how this bylaw was uh, handled in terms of the publicity of it, etc. And so, Madam Clerk, if you can just comment on the procedure that was followed? Uh, certainly, as we do with all of our council agendas and full packages now since the um, inception of our electronic agendas, the entire agenda package, including the site alteration or the environmental protection bylaw, was uploaded to the town's website on Friday afternoon, and um, it's in the form that councillors have received it this evening. It was on the website in three different places, one on the front page under um, council news, one on the council agenda, page and um, that was included with the entire agenda and then it was also uploaded as a separate item on the agenda page on the town's website. Okay, thank you. We, we talk about normal farm practice. I think that's normal municipal practice. So thank you very much for that information. I wonder if other members of council uh, would like to speak to the uh, motion before us, the first reading. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I must admit that I am swayed by the presentations that we've heard tonight and the information that's been provided to us uh, in advance of this meeting and some further information that, that I've gathered. Um, Mr. For that reason, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd, if we are determined that we'd like to deal with this this evening, I'd like to put forward a motion that we move in camera uh, such that we could consult with our solicitor regarding some of the wording that's in here that we might be able to clarify some of the concerns that are are put forward and at least have a discussion with her to see if that could be done on the short term so that we can proceed with uh, uh, dealing with this matter this evening okay. if that is the determination of council. Thank you. Is there a seconder for that motion? Councillor Papp? So it has been moved by Councillor Kersey, second by Councillor Papp. Be it resolved, the next portion of the meeting be closed to the public in order to consider the following matters under the Municipal Act 2001 as outlined below. Uh, A, item under section 239-2F, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, in including communications necessary for that purpose. Is there any discussion on the matter? Councillor Clark? Um, I appreciate what Councillor Kersey is, uh, is asking for here, but um, comments were made by our presenters here and we've followed this route all the way along to be transparent um, that if if we make changes to this in camera that um, there should be some time allotted for the public to see this again the, if, as long as that's part of the process I'd, I'd like not like to see us go in camera make changes and then pass no, yeah, I, I don't think councillor no. the, the, we wouldn't make changes in closed session Okay. Any changes that would be proposed uh, would be voted upon and put on the floor um, in open session. I think the concern of the councillor is to get legal advice, which um, could be done in closed session. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, just want to clarify that there wouldn't be anything, no motions made. We don't vote in closed ses session ever, um, except as allowable by the Act for procedural matters like 
accepting minutes. So there would be no changes that would ever be done in closed session. It would be just to get that advice if council wants to get that advice. So, councilor, do you want to? I have a, a, another comment on a different go ahead. Uh, different thing. Oh no, it's on, on, this, on, on this motion to go into closed session. No, it's not on and that. get and get solicitor client advice. Others to the motion, if you, councilor Pop. Just to pick up with my colleague, uh, councilor Kersey, in light of the presentations this evening, I think it. He uh, just told us to get clarification and uh, sound advice, particularly on some of the matters that were placed before us by the presenters. Because I'm, I'm very, I have to be honest with you, I am unclear. And uh, as I've stated to you before on many occasions, um, the passing of any bylaw, the whole concept of immunization and doing what is fair and best and reasonable is that what we want to do. And we certainly are not trying to uh, create a, a situation of. Uh, undue uh, distress to any of us and for that matter I, I really feel that it's important for us to consult with our legal advisor just to find out where we stand on certain issues if if everyone is agreeable with that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. CAO, why would it be advisable uh, to receive that solicitor client advice uh, in closed session as opposed to in an open forum? Um, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, to answer your question, the uh, information provided by uh, legal to counsel is um, under is privileged information. Uh, it's not information that uh, could or should be discussed in the public eye. It's a chance for um, a frank discussion with uh, legal representation in order to clarify issues, ask for um, advice, and to um, um, ensure that definitions and other things yeah, of legal concern may be um, clearly defined uh, for counsel. Uh, and as has been noted, um, no decisions can be made in camera. It's simply for your information <laughs> generally and for your advice so that you can make the most sound decision as a counsel as, uh, as possible. Okay, thank you. Councilor Gurley, you had uh, some yes, comments thank, regarding the motion? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just in, in regarding that, the, the whole intent of, of this legislature, of this bylaw, was to protect the interest of the active farm operation and the productive farm land that's out there. And Councilor, excuse me, this is to the motion? Exactly. Okay. And, and what, I, what I'm going to say is, is the, uh, you know, the, the fact, and I, I, maybe I'm being a little wordy, but uh, I, I think it's important to point out that the uh, Farm community is certainly a very important contributor to this, and in fact, uh, they're the best stewards of the land. So, in fact, if some of the words that appear in this legislation are not clear to them, I, I think this it would be a great idea to clear this up because the and and this is where I'm going with it. So okay, I, I will support you. it on on this regard that if in fact our our wording is lacking, certainly the intent is there to protect the interest and the actions of the active <coughs> farmer. However, uh, if we are falling short as far as some definitions are concerned, I think we definitely need to clear this up before before it goes through, just to remove that that doubt in there and, and uh, get the trust that in fact this is what our intent is. It's not to hurt the farmer whatsoever. It is in fact to support the farm community because it is so valuable to us. And that's my submission. I will support it on that on that grounds. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor. Others to the motion. Are you ready for the question? Mm -hmm. Going to call the question. All those in favor. Any opposed? That motion is carried. What we'll do is we have quite a large group here. Uh, we do have a room that's just over here, and if council and our solicitor and the CAO and the and the clerk can uh, go to that area to receive the advice, and then we'll we'll be back as soon as we're done with that. So that's what I propose. If, if council's okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they go here. They, they do anyway. Yeah. 
I know, but they don't, they don't care. Are they? There's, there's, there's two well in here that deal with the inspection of the Does that make you feel good? It's not clear that it says that is the official plan designations. That's what the issue I think is. This is written by Yes, that's that's why when I was writing my purchase. I always enjoy a good lawyer talk. Yeah, what did you say indeed? Service for a client of mine, a uh, <laughs> covert for us. Uh, uh -huh. uh, well and Rose. Oh, yeah. I was done very quickly. Yeah, I was very impressed. There was, um, I remember them saying there's this, somebody wants something to eat right away yeah, for whatever so reason. To, to try and beat the half load season. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. 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 When necessary, you know. Yeah. 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 Like, luckily, yeah. the state hurry up for the sake of hurry. Oh, yeah. But it's just like, right. okay, I want to kill out. Yeah. 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 It would be like Loki. People were thinking about Loki. Did you? Did. Oh, look, look. I thought he was kidding. Okay, like this, and then all of a sudden they'd undo it. I thought he was kidding when he said that. <laughs> so I sent him a message that my head hurts, and he said, "I think these guys are off track. I wish I had my dicky on so I can quickly trace up in this." Hey, they they price you something about. Hey, what's all that lip doing there? Not of my husband. Um, it's it's twice that, twice removed. Name, no, name my husband is Dan Poopo. I don't know if you know Jerry, the, te the teacher from Notre Dame. No, the only one I know is Gabe. I used to work for Oma. Oh yeah. It was rather interesting discussion. Nice Very interesting. I don't think I don't think the guys are being read by them. Well, it comes down to interpreting for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm 
Yeah, I'm the chief balloon official. I'm, at, I'm acting director right now. Yes. 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 Yeah, we got some big projects on the way. Yay! I didn't know that. Is there some good money coming in? I don't think there's any money with it. Yeah. <laughs> Permits don't generate the money. It's the taxes. Yeah. I'll take it either way. How can I look at how you're collecting the development charges for them? I have no problem at all because they don't get their building permit until they pay. Yeah. So it's pretty easy for me. I used to be a counselor. Oh, okay. In uh, Bay County. So oh, yeah? I just moved to Bond Hill. Okay. So. How do you like it here? Good. Yeah. Snow's low. Snow's And this is too much for me. Yeah. <laughs> and this like, isn't much of a winter, is it? No. No, I shoveled the driveway three times. The hmm. worst part is, uh, we bought the house on the wrong side of the street. We have a sidewalk. Ah. <laughs> and, and next season, it's going to be done. The whole town's going to be done. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. No, trust me. We worked it out. That man over there, he's got to. I, I keep my eyes on him. Trust me. No overspending. It's not allowed here. Not from her. <laughs> See, they know me. No, it's not. They're just underway right now. They've done their budget, but the their actual rates are not set yet. So the final rate is not for us. Thinking. Usually. Uh, the hey, first meeting they're doing is March 6th. Uh, thinking about you so today. we won't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was going to be here. <laughs> no, I didn't even look to see what was. I don't look at the agenda oh, no. until hey. later on in the day because yeah. I don't want to get upset. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they keep amending, they add things to it, and every time it takes so long to download it. So oh, okay. Wait, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Upset. You know, so I, I just leave it alone and then you go, okay, okay, now I'll take a look and see what's going on. Oh, no. I have not forgot about it. I, okay. I just gotta, I gotta talk to Nancy. Like she's the clerk. She okay. sets up the public meeting, and hey, that's all we gotta do. Like, okay. you know, everything's there. So I got a note to. Well, they've had us. They're trying to train us. Yeah. Okay. It's even in training. Um, two days last week, and three days this week, yeah. and we got a meeting tonight, a meeting tomorrow night, and this training is called Applied Creativity. Okay. And I just about had about enough of the creativity <laughs> of the last of my lifetime, because we have like, how many days? We had about 10 days already. Yeah. We're slow learners, I guess. Uh -huh. This whole thing, too, with with the dots? Yeah, that's you know? it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 yeah. 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 We're at the yeah. top level now. Oh, we're, 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 yeah. we're unbelievable. <laughs> we're like <laughs> Electronics, electric, 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 elect
he's got a, a neighbor who's landlocked. He used to be partners. But he's landlocked. He's got this parcel. It's like 50 acres in the middle of nowhere. There's no way to get to it. Oh, wow. And like, even if we don't close the road, the there's a pond in the way anyway. You can't yeah. get through the pond unless you drive in yeah. and then bolt the rest of the way. Oh, the he's, got, he's got to fill it in. <laughs> oh, <Words. he's laughs> oh, yeah. oh, well, a heresy. <laughs> So I just, there's all these, like, and like, yours was so easy, you know, and these ones get so wacky. And another one I got to deal with, and one I got, we dragged so long, the guy died on us. What do I say something? I say, we just wake them up, you know, we check your pulse. And you know, you're almost like, 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 yeah, because that's more nice. We're gonna be fun. Yeah. You're serving cookies tomorrow. Oh, oh, it's very weird. They start off as gonna be wine. Yeah, wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. Gary says, "Oh, I want beer and wings." Well, then they. I go with wine. I do wine. You know, I smell like. So I'll work towards resolution. It's, it's there. Just putting it out there. So then it goes on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just want to know that it's with our report. I have a lot of fun. So it's Well, I mean, my wife passed away in the meantime. So I didn't care for a while. Yeah, so I finally, I actually have to start with it because then it's pretty good. I don't like making excuses. A lot of it's just simply, you know, people, he'll keep, he, he seems to be happy right now, you know, but I know you want to get it dealt with. And, uh, like, we've got a consensus. And that, like, what, like, I always find, if you can get three people agreeing at the same thing, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my neighbor's only going to agree with two. Yeah, so we'll, we'll move ahead. I'll talk to Nancy and we'll, we'll get something nice. Well, I think it's at the public yeah. advertising yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Public yeah. Meeting. So as soon as I move that set up, I'll let you know. I, I just can't so we'll keep moving on it now. Oh, you know, every day I kind of, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Okay, I don't want you to, it's not a falsehood, you know, I'm thinking, you know, there's, i got to get this thing cleaned up, and as you say, I know I will. <laughs> You're going to dial one of those numbers when you're in serious trouble. Yes. Okay. Leave <laughs> 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 <Hey, laughs> town. If it's, if, it's, yeah, if it's the gas pipe, it's not a big deal. Because it'll just dissipate. It's going to sound whatever, right? It's the truth line that comes from town. Epoxy. What pipeline breaks out? I think it'll zip along pretty quick after this. Please make a decision. 
Okay, I got a report for you here. There's some cemetery operations. It's not hard to do. Well, no, we contract open services. I don't really have any number to care with. Yeah. You can't get rid of the last... Um, we're the last stand. Like, if you don't have, you, if you have a cemetery, you don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. It looks pretty smug. Glasses. Glasses. I was thinking more like old. No, I was tired in the I guess that was, there'll be somebody waiting for us out in the, uh, in the parking lot after. Oh, probably. Can <laughs> you walk me out? No, you can't walk me out. Got a pelt with me. Got a pelt with me. He wouldn't be curious if she wanted a badge, but he wouldn't get me a badge. So oh. I said, well, I'm not doing that. So unless I got a badge, I do nothing. When I go on here, I don't have to hear from Oh, I know it does not. My phone's fine. Uh, uh, hurry up, I know if I'm going to make it all the way to the oh go bathroom break. <laughs> You can go to the dollar store, they usually come with a gun <laughs> and little plastic handcuffs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, it was, it was not that much. No, I think they're just looking for make sure everybody got their money in. Oh. I um, kept playing this ask Brad, make sure you got the time sheets done. And I didn't get anything, I didn't get anything this morning. And all of a sudden I get something from Sarah. She says, did you see this? And we get time sheets, Brad. The last couple of times Brad sent them directly, Gary never sends them to me. I don't know why he's doing 
they're not cheap either. So she sends it to me and uh, I'll take quick I don't know why you know, that kind of stuff. But you know, because I can just kind of flint on this stuff. You know, Luke's probably better than he is. Do you clean Luke up? Because, well, it's always been bottom line anyway. The only thing I have to put on it wasn't over. I was under. And you two told her that. You told her that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Pretty cushy job going on right now. Right? Yeah, those those are readers. You should be able to support them. Come on. That's what I want. Call it 13. Call it 13 times. I'll go to this is like Gail. Gail and Jake. Did you have an eyeball spoken? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm cool with that. The babies are all going to look at Beyonce. You really want it? You're not going to have that glory. You're not going to have that guy. That makes you look good with the babies, too. They're full now. Then they're a little bit. They've got different eyes. I think the eyes are different, too. But not too wacky. It's not big into that whole reading process. This year, this year, this year, this year, this So you go down and you, I'm used to those things where it's just one lawyer on me with our lawyer. And it's really easy because it takes a long time to form their, their opinions about what the next question is going to be. He was at the end of the half hour. He's got the other two lawyers. So he's got the other two lawyers. He's got the other two lawyers. He's got the other two lawyers. There's a whole man, and he didn't get a break because it was just kind of one of his questions, and the other one's already got his question. And the next one, like, I was so stressed, I, I was sat in the front of this before he 
even drive back to Fawn Hill. Because there was no break. It was just the longest time. Mine's charged at 50. We'll swap that to 50. Is he even charging? Yeah, it's just that too. Yeah. It just doesn't charge well. It charges better if you want to get
Blackberry? Yeah, well, all, somebody's already loaned it out on me. <laughs> oh, this iPad charger. <laughs> Mine's at my desk, but it has to be plugged into a computer. Alright, good. <laughs> by the fire chief, we assist him for the building stuff. Because it's, it's passed um, under the Planning Act now. It's under the Building Code Act. The, yeah, yeah, the new Building Code Act. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I tried, But the property standards by law deals with a lot of things, not just buildings. The Bu buildings and crap. Yeah, maintenance of yards, that kind of thing. Yeah. So there's a lot of times where we get have bylaw officers deal with the yard, mm -hmm. where we don't need to have a building inspector go out. No, unless... Okay. Yeah, so that's how we look at it. wearing two hats. In many municipalities, they, uh, not the chief building official, but the highest uh, lower tier yep. building uh, inspector would also be the bylaw. Yeah, we, we do that as well. But it, it, um, for us, we have uh, a lot of our... All of us are actually bylaw enforcement officers as well. Oh, I see. Because we enforce things like the sign bylaw, we have school bylaw, yeah, so zoning bylaw. There's other bylaws that we enforce yeah. on top of the building code. Yeah, of course, the zoning. Yeah. yeah, so when we look at things like property standards, we've set it up here that the bylaw officer deals with the property and then the building inspectors deal with the building itself. It's usually, uh, in some cases, the building. Uh, is unsafe. Yeah. Yeah, that's for us to determine the unsafe conditions and yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that really doesn't need us. It needs They love us. But the balls to clean up. Well no, we got that. It's just I was the whisper.
thank you all for your patience. I need a mover and a seconder to uh, rise from uh, closed session. Moved by Councillor King. Seconded by Councillor Durley. That council adjourn the in-camera session and the council do now rise with no report. All those in favor, any opposed, that motion is carried. Again, thank you all for your patience. On the floor, Council, is the, um, the motion that's before us, which is that leave now be given to introduce the following bylaw and dispense with the reading of the bylaw being an environmental protection bylaw. And that was moved by Councillor Ribiak and seconded by Councillor Clark. Councillor Kersey, you had the floor. Would you like to continue? Um, no, Mr. Mayor, I think I'll pass. Okay, thank you. Others to the debate? Councillor Clark? Two of our, or I might have been all three of the presenters, um, made comment about um, fees for uh, that may apply to this bylaw. And I've read it, and my understanding is that there are no fees. That you know, the example was made: if I want to dig out my pond, <clears throat> I'm going to have to come in and get a permit and, and uh, pay a fee. Perhaps the CAO could clarify that for me, please. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To answer the councillor's question, there are no fees uh, or permits required under this bylaw. Um, there would be no expense um, or application or permit requirements for normal farm practices or or, or, or otherwise. So thank just you, just, for, just for clarity, if I could then, because yeah. of the, the comments that were made tonight. So if the farmer that needs to plow soil up against the highway to keep uh, salt out, there's no fees for that? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I know there are no fees uh, or permit requirements. And the same if some of a farmer needed to uh, desilt a pond, Mr. CEO. Um, no, Mr. Mayor. That's the uh, same answer. No fees or permits required for that activity. Thank you. Others, Councilor Ribiak, you already spoke, but uh, are there others, Councilor Ribiak? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wonder if uh, I can ask uh, Mr. CAO um, with respect to some specific issues that were raised by the presenters and to find out uh, whether uh, their concerns with regard to uh, this bylaw are founded or unfounded. And my understanding, Mr. CEO, CEO is that, that normal farm practices are exempt from, from this bylaw. Mr. CEO, I guess that's a question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, to answer the Council's question, that is absolutely correct. Normal farm practices are completely exempt under this bylaw. One of the presenters had some uh, some specific questions. I wonder whether I could put those to you. I, I forgive the redundancy, but never I forgive the, the redundancy. But let, let me ask the questions anyway. He talked about having had in the past to change the grade of land so as to protect farm and water supplies from per pollution caused by road salt. Is that a normal farm practice that would be? I think we heard the answer to that already, uh, Mr. Seal. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the answer is yes. That would be a normal farm practice and would be exempt under the bylaw. Awesome. Periodic uh, maintenance and clean out of ponds. Mr. Mayor, that would be a normal farm practice and exempt from the bylaw. And the disposition of that material elsewhere on the farm, is that uh, a normal farm practice? From the pond? From I'm the sorry, pond? From Mr. CAO. Yes, Mr. Mayor, that would uh, be exempt as well as uh, considered a normal farming practice. There was a concern raised as well with respect to um, uh, the enforcement an inspection of the bylaw. The concern was with regard to uh, individuals uh, wandering onto the farm property in, in a manner that would provide a hazard to the, to the crops that are being grown there. Can you comment on the way in which the town would be enforcing this policy and the extent to which there is a danger that bylaw enforcement people in the course of their work would be uh, either indiscriminately or without uh, permission entering onto Farmers' lands. Mr. Cino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To answer the councillor's question, uh, there is no reason uh, whatsoever, uh, whatsoever under this bylaw that bylaw enforcement would need to enter onto agricultural property for uh, the purpose of inspection. Normal farm practices are exempt. Uh, that's been stated repeatedly. Um, and if there was a reason for uh, any town employee uh, to enter onto a uh, private farm operation, uh, more than likely would be, would be for matters other than this bylaw. Uh, and also, 
uh, even if it was for some reason associated with this bylaw, uh, there would have to be reasonable notice given, which is clearly outlined in the bylaw. Uh, and uh, the bylaw um, enforcement would also have to comply with the town's policy and protocols, uh, which I've stated uh, in other uh, meetings and for other purposes that there will be no unscheduled surprise visits for enforcement of any bylaw matter whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Other councillors? Councillor Pat? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the CAO. As I understand under Section 2, the bylaw, with the exception of the exemptions, apply to all properties within the uh, geographic limits of the town. Mr. CAO? Sorry, could you just repeat that for me, Councillor? Um, what, what, what land, on what lands does the bylaw? On what lands does this apply to? Uh, section, Mr. Mayor, uh, to answer the question, Section Two, the application is applies to all lands within the geographical limits of the town. Right. Um, again, uh, as far as the exemptions to that, uh, farming practice, normal agricultural right. practices are exempt, um, but it would apply uh, to all other properties, residential, residential uh, any other type of property in the uh, within the town boundary. Thank you. Thank you. Others? Uh, it was suggested, uh, Mr. CAO, that there was a, a duplication of other acts as a result of this, this bylaw, that it was perhaps um, doing what, that was one of the presenters said, that it was duplicating what provincial acts or federal acts uh, uh, do. Um, can you just comment on that? What, whether there is any duplication, how, how is this uh, bylaw allowed? Um, the bylaw uh, does duplicate provincial legislation in the in a very broad context. So, uh, if an act, a provincial act, says you know you're not allowed to pollute, uh, we're in essence saying the same thing. So there is a duplication there. However, stating that uh, this bylaw is specific to certain activities, which is not covered under provincial legislation, uh, and it is also um, the authority for this bylaw has also been granted by the municipal act. Uh, which gives council the uh, responsibility of making sure that environmental protection is considered by the municipality uh, for the betterment of the entire community. Okay, thank you. Others? No other questions? Are we re ready for the uh, for the question, council? <coughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, in, in my earlier submission, I talked about a couple of measures that we might take. And I wonder whether uh, I could have the guidance of the clerk with respect to whether these are motions should providing guidance to uh, uh, direction to staff or are they a separate uh, exercise after we move on the bylaw? I'm, I'm just, uh, and those, those two were about publicizing uh, the way in which uh, people can clarify their, their activities on their own property, number one and number two. Uh, establishing for ourselves uh, a direction to review uh, review the impact of the bylaw in a year or whatever time period council may find appropriate. I can ask the CAO to comment on, uh, I guess, both of them. Mr. CAO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To answer the councillor's question, um, uh, I think it is the recommendation of administration that uh, although there may be concerns uh, with the bylaw, the best um, evidence is how the bylaw is enforced uh, and what it is there to accomplish. Uh, in that context, I think it would be uh, well advised for council to meet proper, perhaps sooner than a year, maybe in six to eight months. Uh, the council has the responsibility to evaluate the policies and programs of the municipality, this being one of them. Uh, and I think it would be a great opportunity to receive feedback um, from uh, the farming community, for example, if this bylaw has had a detrimental effect, has, had, has it had any impact, and is there changes that are needed as a response, uh, as a, uh, a response to that? Um, as far as communicating what is allowed and what is not allowed, any resident of the town uh, that has questions with regards to um, uh, questions or concerns with regards to this or any other bylaw uh, is certainly free to call my office directly, uh, Chief Limber Limburner's office. Um, uh, Mr. Jennings' office uh, for clarification uh, and certainly would be more than willing to uh, uh, provide guidance and answer questions anyone may have with regards to uh, uh, what is permitted and not permitted under town bylaws. 
Yeah, thank you, Councillor. So I'm, I'm still wondering, is that the then a motion that I need to make uh, or is that direction to staff that, that you can take without uh, benefit of, of direction? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think it could be done either way. I think you could you could pass a motion directing that this bylaw be reviewed in eight, eight six, eight months, 12 months, uh, or it could simply be a staff direction that council directs staff to um, uh, set up a, I don't know if it would be a special meeting or whatever you had in mind as far as the review goes, uh, and that's uh, that would work as well. So I think you could do either way. If you wanted to, to be official and uh, ensure that it takes place, you know, you may want to do a resolution, that's fine, but certainly we can act under, under, under uh, direction from council. Madam Clerk, do you have an, where should that be done now or? Uh, we have a motion on the floor right now, so after that motion is complete, then you could entertain a motion for that. Okay, so the clerk, I don't know if the clerk, or everybody heard, the clerk said after the motion is complete, we can entertain a motion Perfect. to that Thank effect you. that we might want to review this in six to eight months yes, or something. Okay, Councillor Kersey. Mr. Mayor, when we deal with this uh, matter and vote on this matter, I'd like a recorded vote, please. Okay, thank you. Other debate? <clears throat> Doesn't have to be just questions. Any debate at this point? Okay, thank you. Um, are we ready for the question? Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, can you, uh, a councillor has requested a recorded vote. Can you please uh, take that recorded vote? The motion is made by Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Clark, that leave now be given to introduce the following bylaw and dispense with the reading of the bylaw being an environmental protection bylaw. I will ask yay or nay in alphabetical order. Councillor Akersey. Nay. Councillor Clark. Yay. Councillor Durley. Yay. Councillor King. Yay. Councillor Papp. Nay. Councillor Ribiak. Yay. Mayor Augustine. In favor. The vote is five in favor, two opposed. That motion carries. And the next portion is moved by Councillor Ribiak, seconded by Councillor Clark. I, I just wondered, did you want that recorded that? vote, Councillor, or? That's just the numbering. Are you satisfied? No, that's fine. Okay. That's Thank, satisfied. You. Thank you. The next motion has been moved by Councilor Ribiak, seconded by Councilor Clark. The following bylaw have been considered a first time, be numbered as follows. Bylaw 3357, 2013, be now considered a second and third time and passed. And the Mayor and Clerk do sign and seal the same. Any rule of council to the contrary, notwithstanding. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Councilor Ribiak. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Make now, I'd like now to make uh, motion with regard to uh, direction of staff that that we um, entertain submissions from the public uh, who are uh, affected by this bylaw and who wish to make their, their views known in six or eight months so that we can assess whether the um, bylaw is having the effect that it should have and not having any effect that it that we don't intend it to have okay is there a seconder for that councillor king are we are we clear on the uh, on the motion direct staff to <coughs> Wait for the clerk to. to to entertain submissions from the public that are affected by this bylaw and within six to eight months uh, report back to council to ensure the bylaw has had the effect it should have and not had the effect that it shouldn't have. Detrimental effect. Detrimental. So, councillor, just for clarity, it's the intention that that be sought in six or eight months as opposed to. <coughs> that, that's right, Mr. Mayor. I think six the intention of my, my motion is that we publicly have an exercise in which we review the impact of this. And, and then, of course, we're free to take whatever action is indicated by that, if any is, by, by that uh, public presentation. Okay, thank you. Any questions, comments on that uh, motion of direction <coughs> to staff? There being... Seconder, I'm sorry. It was Councillor King was the seconder. Can I call the question? All right, I'm going to call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item is uh, supposed to be the report of Regional Councillor Beatty. I wondered if we wanted to take a brief uh, recess uh, before we continue with the balance of the agenda. So, Councillor Beatty, we'll start in about, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, in about five minutes. Thank you.